Hello. How are you all? Did you bring your laptops today? Unless you have more, I mean, something in addition. No. Okay. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. This is George. He is a good little monkey and always very curious. One day, George got an important letter. We have to have since we're live streaming. We have to. Have. Oh, okay. But you, yeah. So you can, how do I do that through here? No, through your computer. You connect to the Wi-Fi. Oh, and then we'll just automatically do that. Well, you'll choose what Wi-Fi ne network you want. You want um, Spark, East, or um, right? And then, but how does it show on the screen? Oh, you've never done a PowerPoint before, like using the projector? Yeah, I have. Oh, but just plug it in. I just don't see the blood, I guess. Is the issue. So we need to do it through Wi-Fi, not, not off, don't use uh, the one on my computer, right? What do you mean the one on your computer? The actual presentation off my computer, go to Wi-Fi to use it. Well, oh, well, if you don't, you might not we need Wi-Fi. If you don't, if you're not going to the internet, if you're just tuning off your computer, then you're fine. Oh, okay.
minute. So, I'm, well, one thing is you don't have as many people to go through introductions, so that comes <laughs> sometime. What is your name? I'm Devin. Devin. I'm Leslie. Um, Devin, what was your name? Amy. 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 Michelle. Okay, so, Michelle, did you already give your spill about the community media lab? And no. Okay. Oh. I don't think Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so um, today's session is brought to you by uh, Heritage Community Media Lab. So just to let you know some of the things we do um, uh, outside of the workshops, it's run by the same outfit that does the Ann Arbor Journal, Atlantic Courier, the, like a whole other, Selena Porter and the whole outfit. And we have people here from nine to four that will help you um, learn different tools, digital tools, whether it be blogging or um, how to use, you know, be a better photographer or how to upload things. It could be simple or uh, more. a lot of, all of the news reporters have to use all that anyways. So, and the Her Heritage has a blog, which is at the communitymedialab.wordpress.com, so WordPress blog, and that one's set up or, or run by the people that actually you know work at heritage but then there's also community blog um options so if you go on to heritage.com and um just look up community or um community blogs then you'll see a host of different um a host of different people from the community whether it be nonprofits or some people there's one fellow who talks about movie reviews. And so they, you know, just have their fellow blog and it you put the heritage label on there so it allows more people to access your blog, especially when you're first getting started. Wasn't your computer on? I just looked and I didn't see anything. Yeah, because I put it on projector only. Oh, so you can't see the image on your screen then? Yeah, I did. So I've never used a projector and either has Erica, so we really can't help you with that. I can bring the um, smart TV out if you want. Okay, maybe that's. But that, then we go to your um, PowerPoint on um, script. That's fine. We'll continue that's fine. Okay. Yeah, continue. And um, on uh, Facebook, um, there's a community media lab page, so you can find, you know, events such as this one, or if there's any changes um, with staffing, or, or you know, what staff is here to help you with what tools. Um, also, other things that might be happening here, and this is a bigger part of Spark East. So this is part of the Spark building, so you'll find all sorts of things that are going on here. If you get a chance, there's tables outside that have uh, information on some of the things going on here. You can also follow us on Twitter. Um, so that's the twitter.com slash communitymediaL. So not the whole lab. And my information, if you have this, is also on Twitter too. So the, my business, let's go, is a so, uh, social or the pages are so forth. And that's where I primarily keep all the blogs and writing. So, um, you, why I <laughs> doing this class? Let me quickly say, my background is in writing, and that's a you know in a different a lot of different genres, and also community. So it's the kind of merge, and with a love for social media, this is where I came up with Let's Go uh, Social Media Marketing and Training. So. Should I stand here so it can be seen? I forgot about that. So, <clears throat> there's something that's to be said about community organizations and nonprofits. If you think about what's the common uh, theme, is a lot of times it's resources, whether it's time or money or 
skill set, with technical skill set, right? Um, and so a lot of times we're, you know, either look for an intern to do the blogging or, you know, a friend or it's, you know, sporadic whenever you get time. So this will help you make a decision on whether or not you, you know, blogging is right for you or your organization, as well as ways to make it a little bit easier. So what made you come out today? Well, I'm uh, working in the National Anthony Training Institute, so I Ooh. Um, and so I was hoping to just get a little bit more information maybe to improve my work in blogging for the DIA. Um, and then also to hopefully work for a nonprofit um, and actually get a job. <laughs> um, so just a little bit more actually. Mm -hmm. So, okay, cool. So, did you get a chance to look at the. I did the, look the objectives. Okay, no, no, no. I just meant the objectives. Oh. Okay. okay. So, the best practices and connecting with other bloggers, um, and transitioning from the newsletter to the blog. Do you guys still have a newsletter? Do you? Oh. Uh, well, all of you. Yeah. Do you still have a newsletter? Okay. Cool. So, there's ways to transform that. So the first thing is social media. I always remind people that blogging is a form of social media. Actually, email is in its own way. It's still a form, it's 1.0, but it's still a form of social media. It's just not two-way um, with the quick return as you know, some of the other ways or is um, good at, with communication. So anything with social media, there's three components, and that's communication, content, and community. And if you notice here, I put content with the biggest piece because I want you to get so worried about, you know, how to get your message out, what it should look like, and, you know, um, whether it's two to three times, we can see some people that really are, you know, exact about the science of when they publish their blogs. But if you don't have quality and consistent content, it, it won't even matter, you know, so. So it's everything that you do as a nonprofit or a community organization. Um, you probably are used to communicating most of the day um, and sharing content with people as well as being a part of the community. It's just all that's online. The best description I heard from somebody saying what I do is uh, sophisticated networking. So, and the first piece, I'll go in order of what I, I thought we should focus on first is community. So the first piece is transitioning or, or transition your community, whether it's online or offline, while building your new online community. So what I mean by that is um, where your community, where's your community? Who do you consider part of your community right now? Anyone can answer. You have more than one community. If you all speak at the same time, I can't hear you. <laughs> Go away. Who's your community? So, is it supporters? Supporters. Um, maybe Detroit. Yeah. Art lovers, or <laughs> you know, what, people that already invest your donor base, right? Um, for community organizations such as yours, I'm sure donor base, you know, your donor base is huge. You want to make sure they're communicated to effectively and often, right? <laughs> and also people that they come there on a regular basis that, as Michelle said, your supporters. <coughs> when you go online, it's the same thing. One of the, the first issues I hear people complain about with social media, especially if they're not used to getting online and being a part of that world, is it's too much information. I feel overwhelmed. It's I can't sort it all out. You knowing who your community is offline 
who your target is offline will help you find your community online. So I repeat that again. If you know, who, if you don't know, <laughs> I'll say it a different way. Negative spin. If you don't know who your audience is offline, you're going to get online and you'll be overwhelmed, right? Because if you don't know what groups to get up in or who to look for, and it's just this big open space where there's people posting, you know, 600 things, well, actually 600 million things to be exact, every minute, you're going to get overwhelmed. So if you, if your Detroit Institute of Arts, think about your donor base or your supporters. Are they people maybe that the same thing you would do if like you were doing a business plan? How much, what's your bracket of people that help the most? Are they people that are of all income ranges? Are they more families? Are they more um, people with kids? Or people that just moved into the area? Right? If you, you can translate that online and using Facebook, using LinkedIn, using Twitter. Um, you can use more than that, but you know, Care2 is another one, care2.org, um, Wikimedia, you know, find or Flickr, find people, Flickr is a good one for DIA, um, find people that are interested, that may, the same sort of people that would, might come through your doors. Once you find those people that might come to your doors or might read the articles that you provide. So if you mostly write about um, pets, or, you know, pet issues, or if you mostly write about um, whether it's kid issues or education. So you want to find the, those same sort of people and those ideas and those values online. Which section are you under what? Community. Right here. Mm -hmm. So, thank you, Michelle. Um, so, so, yeah, so when you're, when you hear that, the last thing I want to make sure that you do is, um, is engage with, you know, talk to that community online. So, if you're used to, a donor base or a supporter base, you probably see them out, right? Or see them at some point <laughs> during the year. You have a mixer, right? You want to have the same sort of interactions online. If you go on LinkedIn, they have groups. So, for instance, I'm a part of Social Mediapolis for a social media specialists. That's the fourth largest group within LinkedIn, right? What's important about that is I had I that group for me is too big to interact with as far as you know just talking and making friends. There's five five hundred thousand people in that group. I'm not probably gonna make real relationships, not on a large scale. But I find out a lot of information. It's a good way to quickly find information about the field and the interests that I have. If you are in the arts or if you're in a community um, agency, find a community or a, a community online that's already talking about some of the same things as you. If you don't want to um, maybe have the same community that other people have around here, you can uh, look and see what people are doing across the country. So. I wanted to do something on my page, for instance, about Domestic Violence Awareness Month, which is this month, in addition to breast cancer, in addition to Lupus Awareness Month, it's also Domestic Violence Awareness Month. So in California, <laughs> of all places, they have an advocacy group that has a um, pretty well together um, social media market campaign for the month, including a page or two pages of stats that you can post on your Facebook or your Twitter or your LinkedIn, whatever, for every day of the month. So you can, you know, it does two things. One, it takes the guessing game about what do I say, and two, um, it allows you to, to already know um, 
who's all interested in the same sort of things. You build the solidarity because everyone's saying the same thing. So I was probably talk a lot about community, but that's because that that is going to be your driving force on um, making your blog effective. The um, next one is communication. So what do you have to say, how often, and to whom? So what do you have to say, anybody? What your organization is up to. Yeah, What? so events and, and awareness about your organization, mm -hmm. right? What else? Okay, <laughs> so um, you what do you say right now? You said you're over social media. What do you talk about? Um, a lot of it is, um, I guess, profiling new things that are coming, new exhibitions or just special events. So profiling new exhibitions, new things that are happening, even things for people to come bring their families to and, and so forth, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Erica, what do you... What do you tweet about, or the news? The news? What do you? What about the news? Just what's going on. So, I mean, you have more specific question. I don't know. Okay, so, um, so what about the news? Do you say read it, or do you do you tell just people? Try to pick out a detail about it. Pick out a detail about what's going on. Okay. That's actually a, a good idea. So m some people will read everything you put out there. Most people won't, <laughs> right? You, don't, you only got 90 seconds of their attention. So if you can pick out a detail that will make them want to read, like click on the link to read the article, that's good. And as a journalist, that's important, right? Same thing when you um, are blogging you're going to want to have the social media aspect to kind of pick out something out of your blog where people are going to want to click and reach out. Also, how often? So right now, how often do you guys um, contact your community online? Three times a day? Three times a day? A few. Uh, probably between three and ten, depending on what's going on. Is it all the same community or? Um, no. It's Okay, a couple, okay. So, do you ever receive feedback? Um, yes, in like comments and stuff. You get comments and such, okay. So, have you ever, um, like that's just an example, you could actually build a blog, like a blog entry around the comments. If you get one that, uh, one of the, um, tweets or status updates or, or <coughs> some form of communication you do, build an entry around what people are saying about something. Okay. And to whom? Who do you reach out to? What do you guys, where do you guys roam online? Well, for example, if we post a story and it has something to do with a nonprofit or a business in Milan. Um, not only will I post it to our Milan News Leader Facebook page, but I'll post it to the Chamber of Commerce Facebook page. Right, okay. So the Chamber of Commerce, that's, that's good. And then, what else, where do you guys post? When you post? Um, we'll often post, I guess, to other, like, um, Midtown Detroit um, events that are happening in the area. So we'll post that How, how do you post? Um, we'll post each other's walls or... Um, on Facebook, you mean? On Facebook, yeah. Okay, okay. And then um, on Twitter, but I typically don't manage the Twitter. That's my boss that manages the Twitter. But, um, or like tagging people or just tweeting at them. Mm -hmm. Okay. So 
these people that you tag and, and that comment, do you see any common denominator amongst those people? Like what what makes them alike? Are they all supporters or all all donors or um, do you get more comments on Facebook versus Twitter? Oh, uh, we get a lot more comments on Facebook um, just because I feel like people feel more willing, I guess, to um, follow their own like, opinion on the news or whatever. Um, a lot of it is other businesses, but then we do get a lot of other um, members of the EA or people who are visiting. Hi. Hi. Hi, Joel. Join you. Yes, please do. We have, okay. stop, we have to stop reading like this. <laughs> Hi, you guys. This is Joel. So the reason I asked that is because the communication, it looks different, you know, right? Facebook versus Twitter. Mm -hmm. Do you have any other sites that you use? Um, we use Twitter, and then our meeting shop uses Pinterest, but we mm -hmm. really Okay, so you have different different people um, and do you have a lot of feedback on your Pinterest or repins? Pinterest is still pretty small I guess it's fairly recent um, mm -hmm. that somebody created a profile but I guess it's been getting better and better and better. right so what do you communicate about things that are not directly affecting you in your organization? Anybody? Sometimes you want to stimulate conversation. You might put a poll up and that could lead to a story in the future. Or um, just sort of you want to communicate with your audience, get a conversation going. Yeah, a conversation mm -hmm. going, right? Mm -hmm. So I anyone else? What do, you, what do you do to stimulate conversation outside of talk about your own events? Like, uh, I guess it's Do you ever um, find allies? You can also find allies in other um, art institutes that aren't in Detroit, for instance, mm -hmm. right? So that might be another option, just you know, just to think about too. So if you, I know you probably like, oh, I have so much time, right? <laughs> you have time to, you know, maybe there's somewhere in Nebraska that has an arts institute that has a similar model mm -hmm. and you believe in maybe if you post stuff from um, their blog or their you know photos from their exhibits maybe they might do the same thing for you mm -hmm. so <clears throat> and lastly um, is content so that's respect engage and remember so, and with respect, you already know the, the piece about making sure that you're not um, telling people's personal stories. I don't think you guys work for um, agencies where you deal with people's personal or confidential matters, but maybe someone online is. So, I always... Um, remind people to watch out for the poster child syndrome. It's so easy to do. I remember one time I, um, I received a scholarship at a community college and it was on the wall. It was on marketing stuff. I mean, it was just everywhere. It was like, I don't want the whole world to know, <laughs> you know, and it's good. And I was happy and, you know, and it made me, um, you know, it was a difference between whether I was able to finish school that semester or not. But on the, on the other hand of that is being respectful and asking people, do you mind if, you know, we, we kind of champion our cause with your picture or your, um, your story? and also their confidentiality. Also, making sure that not only you respect people that 
anything you put your hand on is respected. So, um, especially with the presidential uh, season in right now, what I've seen people is, like, they'll post something that's, you know, one way or the other, <laughs> where, they, where they're voting or where their thoughts lie, and it's, you know, fine. And then maybe 10 comments deep, what happens? It gets nasty. <laughs> See, you know, verbal middle figures, you know, <laughs> back and forth. And, and then your cause gets lost, right? Your cause gets, um, whatever your cause is or your message or your mission is, now is lost in people thinking, oh, they're just some... They're just some liberals, or they're just some Republicans, right? And there can be arguments on both sides about, you know, who's who's a better supporter for the arts and for nonprofits. Um, probably shouldn't say this, but one one development director he put on there, he said, you know, one side is good for sympathizing, another one is good for funding. <laughs> Either way you wanna you wanna take that. You have to be mindful that the people that, you know, say their ideas on your page or on your comment or on your picture, that they're respecting other people. And you know, so as an administrator you might have to delete a comment. And if you delete a comment and you know how to contact the person it's more than okay to just, you know, send them an email or an inbox or a chat and say, you know, hey Joe, you know, no, you know, no, no harm intended, but I deleted your comment because I just didn't want anyone to get offended. Not that they did, but they might be, right? Um, also engage. So to engage your community online through your content. Oh, okay. So, so, in, so when you engage your um, community online or you know with your content, you want to make sure that um, you have something, some reason for them to ha find value in what you have to say. So as you think about, okay, do I want to start a blog? Think about what your goals are for the blog with your content to engage readers. So, um, especially with <coughs> community um, agencies or community organizations, nonprofits, sometimes through, I'm sure everyone's busy, the blogs can be, you know, dry. We'll just say that much. You know, it's just, um, we're having a cider mill exhibit from six to eight, come and get a free cup of cider, you know? And, you know, that's the blog, <laughs> right? So why would I look at your blog or subscribe to your blog when I could just get that off of your Facebook page or the newsletter that comes out, right? It's got to be something separate, something to spark engagement. Um, so, with the one of the ways that I tend to do that, or you know, I've seen other um, successful bloggers, is use a theme. So it can be the director's notes, or it can be, um, you know, like you were saying, the profiles um, of artists. You know, a look. You know, maybe I don't through the artist's eyes. I'm sure that's corny and probably someone's already thought about it seven times, but you know, just an example, through the artist's eyes and you know, have a different profile. You know, Joel, he um, works with businesses and nonprofits. So um, maybe thinking of the media and ground, the community, you know, if you're thinking about a blog, where do they intersect, you know? Um, in the last uh, 10 years, now that we've had uh, two recessions in the United States and several around the world and a global recession in 2008, what you find is there are a lot of people that 
are finally listening to us community heads in the bottom line, right? So now um, that is where we're introduced to the triple bottom line, which is, you know, money, um, environmental, and social. <clears throat> so maybe, you know, helping businesses to, you know, understand that, that correlation. I remember um, Pfizer was a big deal back here, back in the 2000, the early 2000s to maybe 2004. It was the, the biggest and the hottest. And before that was in Park Davis or something. And everyone who worked there poured a lot of money into the arts, into the theater. And uh, when they went out of business, you know, the first thought of, you know, was the, the people that were directly affected, right? Um, what we found is, is that those people that were working at Pfizer poured in about $4 million a year into the arts. Okay, so those people that, same people that poured money into the arts were also pouring money into the candy stores or the, you know, the hair salons or the, you know, the, the businesses where you have to tug into that discretionary income, right? So <coughs> the first to hurt was the artists, the musicians, right, the nonprofits. And so, you know, not everyone, I don't want to typecast, but not everyone heard their cry because like, well, that's, you know, that's not as important. But then when these businesses, you know, and you started seeing ghost towns in, in the middle of the, the main streets, it, you know, now everyone's engaged. Now we're in <laughs> community again. So, and also the last piece of the content is to remember. So, as a nonprofit or a community organization, there's always somebody that A, did what you did before them, before you, or set the path, um, or helped you along. Um, and that's another possible focus for your blog, or your, um, whether that's a regular blog or a micro blog, like Twitter or something. Um, you wanna make sure that you remember to say your thank yous, that you remember the people that help, you know, helped get you where you are, that um, that support you, and also the people that um, that laid that paved the path for you. So sometimes that looks like um, an author who maybe wrote a book that legitimize the concept that you now model your business or your organization after. Maybe it's remembering uh, a key person. So I'm involved, for instance, with Peace Neighborhood Center. There was a lady who um, spearheaded the whole, what now looks like the after school program for the kids. She had a little daycare there. Well, she died of breast cancer shortly after um, you know, we had our new building and everything. Well, that's a, a good piece for people to, to know, even though she didn't have a long time because of her short life, she made a huge impact on our programs 41 years later. So. And lastly, don't be afraid to make mistakes. People are most interested in your message. So at this point, I wanted to talk specifically about the blog. So who here has a blog? One, two, three. Thinking about it, <laughs> Erica. <laughs> you have the staff blog. Yeah, oh, you have the staff blog. Okay, so you contribute. So this is kind of about you. Oh, okay. So the staff blog. I, I guess I didn't realize there was a staff blog and a community. There are several, blog. yeah, for depending on which newspaper. Oh. Well, 
Well, you have to maybe they're on your blog roll. They're on your blog roll. Well, maybe if you don't mind, maybe you can post them inside the group too. Um, the event page, or or the I put them on the event page, or on the community media lab page on Facebook. Okay. Or I can do it if it's on the blog roll on the. Kitchener Heritage slash blogs. Okay. Mm -hmm. And see that you bring up a good point. So Joel is just, you know, saying that, you know, right now he's comfortable with Google Plus, and that's what he's using as a blog. It's not, you know, official blogging software, but you can use it as a blog, just as you can use. Well, I don't know. The Facebook Notes used to be a really good blogging thing, but now they've um, changed that app a little bit, so I'm not sure. Um, if it's the best solution, but every everywhere you go has some way of you to sort out, you know, your notes to your community. So that might be a better way to go, especially at first, before you have a commitment. When I say commitment, like somebody <laughs> that can do it, and some sort of time frame, right, that you can pour into it each week or each month or whatever. So, um, Twitter is a microblog. So if you hashtag appropriately, you know what I mean by hashtag? That's a little pound sign, and then you put, you know, usually six to ten um, letters or numbers, and and that categorizes it. You know, just like the Dewey Decimal System would do back in the day. <laughs> in the library, it's actually, Twitter is a library. It, it, it works like a library. Um, and it's <coughs> followed by the Library of Congress, or held by the Library of Congress. You may not want the community on Twitter though. That may, if you think about it, how many people that follow you offline or online are on Twitter? Any of you, give me a guess. How many of your friends are on Twitter? How many of your supporters are on Twitter? How many of your donors are on Twitter? It's hard to tell because you get so many followers. Like we have about, about 3,000 followers on the Ann Arbor Journal. But we don't know, you know, what is really, who's really watching and interested and, you know, well, I didn't say followers, though. Right, right. You don't know with the followers. And that's why I don't ever focus on the followers. I say, how many people do you know on your follower list? Right. So when you have 3,000, it's hard to keep track. Oh. I mean, you can create lists and that kind of thing, but it, it's, it's still over, hard. It's overwhelming. Yeah. At that point, yeah. It's still hard. Do you know how many people? Yeah, it would be harder with 3,000. But um, how do you guys know how many of your people? Maybe you can poll them. How many people use Twitter that also read your articles? Or how many people use Twitter that also come to your events? Well, what we're certainly trying to encourage it. We put our Twitter handles, every reporter has a professional Twitter account. We put that in their bylines and put it at the end of their stories. Right. So. Yes. You can, and, and Michelle brings up a good point. Whatever you do, you want to link it to one another, especially like you were saying, you know, you have one person that's doing Pinterest, another person's doing Twitter, you do Facebook, you're, you're uh, you know, what happens is you guys start to <laughs> work in the separate arms. So when you post or on your Facebook page, make sure somewhere that you have a link to your Twitter, even if you're not the one, you know, creating the content, a link to your Pinterest a link to your blog. You're all working on the same cause, correct? If you have people, artists, that have a blog, a Flickr blog, a picture blog, a Facebook, link to their pages. If you have donors that talk you up, donors that give to DIA that 
you know, regularly talk about how they love going to the arts or whatever else. And they have a page, maybe it's a mixed page, and they don't just talk about DIA, but they talk about other stuff too. Maybe, you know, asking them to link your page to their page, right? So this hat, so this creates what's called, you know, backlinks for one, and activity. So why is activity important? Okay. <laughs> activity is important because one, it's an organic way to push yourself up on the search results, right? So the, the more people are dinging and posting and retweeting and um, looking up your page, you don't get that. Back in the day, you had to rely on your website. No one's clamoring to see what's on your website on Tuesday, what's on your website on Thursday, <laughs> you know. But if you have some other way for them to do, um, to have some reason to learn about new things about DIA, the idea is keep it fresh, keep them, you know, keep them engaged, something new as much as you can. So um, when, let's see if we can go to a blog. Do it with this. Never mind. I, okay. Yeah. You guys have, you, you all have seen blogs because you already have blogs, right? Okay. So we're okay. I was going to show you a couple um, that are my favorites. But I would say because of what you do, the message is the most important. So you might play around with the colors and the pictures and all that. But don't let that stop you and don't let that um, retard your growth online, okay? Because you have people that want to hear your message. If you're in business in any form, in any form, there's somebody out there that wants to hear what you have to say. <laughs> so you just have to find them, right? So it's good to have a Facebook, for instance, but people are, because people are on there, right? But Facebook is not always where people want to be engaged. When you're on Facebook, okay, let me rephrase. When I'm on Facebook, I'm on there to play, right? <laughs> I don't watch TV, I don't listen to the radio. Facebook is my, not only what I do for business, also but I learn to go to play, I talk to people and things. And sometimes I'm on there, I don't want to, to hear about the newest special or the newest exhibit or whatever the case is. So you have to be mindful of that too, that for some people you're an interruption. You're stopping them from what they were already trying to do. Okay, so another reason why um, a blog might be a good way to go is that you can, you know, still tweet or post statuses, but on your blog you can you can give people the opportunity to come and look and see what you're doing when they're ready to hear about what you're doing, but you constantly give them reminders that it's there. So you give them reminders on your pages, you give them reminders by asking them to subscribe. So when you first start, it will make sense to just um, ask someone each time, you know, hey, I just posted something about um, the kids of artists and and how the kids of artists have um, you know healthier meals because it's more colorful <laughs> you know so they have so maybe there's a new study out right and you post that you you know if there's something you know riveting but sometimes um, you may not get a chance to do that or you may not capture your whole audience remember that on a personal profile only about 12% of your um, friends, as we call them on Facebook, see your post. On a Facebook business page, only about 16% actually see your post. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> now, you know, there's the Facebook ads and you can promote articles as little as a dollar a day. 
Um, but we're talking, you know, low cost or no cost, right? So we want to organically do it. Not everyone's seeing your message. I've heard people say, and I used to say, let me quit. I used to say that too, like, I don't know, I'm posting something all the time and I'm not, you know, <laughs> no one's seeing it, right? Only so many people are seeing it. Um, similarly, on Twitter, it moves so fast. The more people you have, the faster it moves. So if you have 3,000 followers, people are not able to keep up with all those tweets. They're just not. So that's why you want to pepper it with, you know, hey, I just did this new blog post about X, Y, Z. But you also want to encourage people to subscribe. So, here's the next one. You might have to do a little bit of educating. That means steps one through five. How do you subscribe to an RSS feed? Right? So, like literally, that's you know, that might be a post on your Facebook or your Twitter or or your Google Plus or your LinkedIn. How do you how do you subscribe to our RSS feed? And just you know, tell them look here, you know, you, you know look to the right and click on it, and it'll be in your toolbar, and you'll be able to see a like I can see a little number one or two depending on how how many I'm behind in reading. You can look at, use the Google Reader to do the same thing as the RSS feed. And you don't have to know all the technical terms verbatim. Like for instance, at the moment, I cannot remember what RSS stands for. <laughs> but I know how to use it, I know how to explain it to the, you know, to get people to use it. Really and simple syndication. Really simple syndication? Yeah, really? Yeah. Okay, so it's probably, and I'll forget it tomorrow, probably. Maybe not. <laughs> but I've used RSS for years and years, but no one's ever asked me to, you know, spell it out. But um, in any case, teach people. A lot of times we'll say, subscribe to my blog. Look at my blog roll. How many people know what a blog roll is? Do you know what a blog roll is? Anyone? Okay, so on the blog, you, there's a place um, it's a widget, is what it's called, and when you're doing your settings on whatever blog, and this is the difference between using something like a Google Plus versus WordPress or um, Blogger, Google Blogger, right? So that's the difference. You have, you can really set your own feel and set your own widgets and settings. So when you set a widget for a blog row, you're able to connect to, like, have links to your favorite blogs. So, <clears throat> if you have, like what I was saying about the Nebraska Institute of Art, which I don't know if even is this, but I'm just giving an example. Um, whatever similar organization or ones that have the same idea behind, like Joel and I have very um, well, we have overlap in our idea of communities and how businesses and nonprofits should work together, whatever. Our businesses are totally different, right? So he's not a competitor, but we have similar mindset. So he would be maybe a good candidate to be on a blog role, you know? Or maybe some people that are committed to, um, it might be musicians, right? Maybe a good musician site that appreciates the arts. Musicians are notorious for also liking art. <laughs> and so put that on your blog row. And it's usually listed, you know, you can have it on the left or right side. I usually see it on the right hand side. And it's just these lists. Okay, so because a lot of people get online and they'll like a blog, but they don't know, they only go to blogs because somebody told them. They don't know how to go out and find new blogs. You want new viewers as well as old viewers, right? So the, the blog wrote, you know, asking people, hey, I have a, we have a Detroit Institute of Arts, or we, I have this tent, you know, this uh, dish fish business starting, or I have, you know, this, you know, local newspaper that's starting, 
and you have a local newspaper um, in, you know, Bloomfield, Tennessee, can you put me on the blog roll? I see that you have, you know, similar issues that, you know, similar setup with your community and education. And now you have, you just expand, you just expanded your community, right? So that's a blog roll. But again, that includes education. That includes, you know, sometimes we have to take ourselves out of, take ourselves out of the role that we're in and say, what if, I wasn't a journalist for four years. What if I wasn't a journalist for 10 years? What if I hadn't been blogging for the last three years? Would I know what a blog role is? You know, would I know what, you know, backlink means? Would I know what, um, you know, RSS feed? Probably not, right? And you gotta think about who your community is. It's always reminding in the back, should be like a little, you know, those little people on the left and the right shoulder should be a little person behind your shoulder saying, yo, my community, right? So it should always be reminding you who your community is at all times. So um, when you get ready and you want to put a blog roll of, or somebody on your blog roll that makes um, homemade shoes or, or makes, um, makes basketballs, and you're only putting them on because it's your your friend's ex-husband's niece, maybe that's not the best thing for your blog roll. You could still support them personally, right? But everybody on your blog roll should share your mission and should you know, should be able to, to put your message, you know, forward. Push your message forward. Was that it, we're clear on that so far? Okay. So, okay. I wanted to, yeah, okay, we good. So, we can stay here at the message. We can stay at the message. So, right now, I'm going to give you guys a sheet of paper unless you have. Do you have paper? Anybody not? Okay, bye. Um, yeah, I can. I want you to to first I have some. So the three things I want you to do. First, I want you to think of and everything's in threes. <laughs> so it's easy. Think of three things that you would like to get out to your community. Three pieces of information you would like to get out to your community. They can be little or big. By the way, um, for some people, like including me, like you might want to write on the actual presentation too, if that makes sense for you. So three things that you'd like to get out. So some examples. Do um, you want to get out information about an upcoming event? Do you want to, um, what are your goals? So like are you trying to get um, new volunteers. So maybe talk about the motivations of your current volunteers. Why do people get involved with your organization? I know, I know, I know. You have the best organization in the world. Anyone would be a fool not to get involved, right? <laughs> but we're in Van Arbor, we're in Washington County. There are huge amounts of nonprofits and good organizations and good people and sometimes you know we just need to make sure we're advocating for ours because there's so many people with so many good intentions uh, which is not a bad thing next I want you to think of 
three things that you would want in your theme that make you unique. So if you were to think of, you can think of it in terms of a theme or you can think of what three things make you unique, your business, your organization, your blog. There are about like, three million blogs. What makes yours readable versus the other 20 reasons, just three. <laughs> just three reasons you're unique. Three ways. Somebody left there. Hmm. Oh. Let me see. <laughs> Next is name three people that you know that will always read your blog. It can even be your mama. My mom wouldn't. <laughs> My mom's not an online person, I should say. She would if she was online, but <laughs> it got her an email. It's, it's good. This is my mother calling. Oh, really? Yeah, she's in my mom. <laughs> My oh my gosh, is she watching? No disrespect to Joel's mother, please. <laughs> okay, so name three people, or list three people that you know will always read your blog. Anybody struggling on that? Does anybody not have three people that will always read it? You don't have to say it out loud. Next, think of three um, three times in in which it will be very difficult for you to keep up a block. Like around the holidays. Around the holidays, or you know, vacation time, or um, busy time at work. Yeah. Lives that you already follow that you think are pretty cool and why it doesn't have to be a paragraph and it doesn't have to be educated or intelligent it could just be pretty pictures <laughs> or they use orange and I like orange whatever it is So, how was that for you guys? Anybody? Did you were you able to answer all the questions? Anybody have was any were any of the questions a struggle for anyone? No. one, which
which is you, Ooh. right? Uh-huh. You're unique. I know that's so kindergarten. <laughs> my um, <laughs> my uh, pastor's uh, my pastor's son just graduated from preschool, and so he goes to this little. He went to this home de- uh, daycare, and every time he walks into the you know, into the room, they all say, hi, friend. <laughs> so that's how they're taught, right? And so moving, trans, going from that, transitioning from this, hi, friend, we're all friends, we all hug, to regular school is, you know, difficult <laughs> for a little person. But um, same thing when you think about what's unique, think about, like, you know, you have to feel confident that someone wants to read it, you know? Um, I've heard people downplay their own blog to other people. Have you ever heard that before? Oh, yeah, I got a little blog. It's, it's nothing much to me. You know? <laughs> If you don't think it's nothing much, you know, like, I, I don't have a spare time to be sitting and read your nothing muches, you know? <laughs> or they'll say, um, oh, I have <clears throat> another one I, I hear sometimes people say, which is funny to me, is, oh, yeah, um, I have a blog when nobody reads it. Have you heard that? Okay, maybe that's so. Maybe no one really does read it. But you don't tell people that. <laughs> Don't, don't seal your own fate, you know, because cause then that's going to, people people put that personally on you, like, oh, they're not reading, you know, Michelle's blog because Michelle doesn't have anything good to say, right? Versus, maybe people just not aware, or they just haven't gotten a habit of reading it yet, or whatever the case may be, right? So you want to talk up your own blog. So... <clears throat> if you're part of an organization that includes more than you, on that list of three people that will always read your blog, like somebody on that organization should be there. You support each other, right? So, um, <clears throat> when you so now that you have that, do you think you could come up with three blog entries? If you had the time, let's say you had a, three more hours, could you come up with three blog entries? Give me an example of something you talk about. If you had it. three hours, you don't have to get real specific, but just an example. You have to become their friend too, right? Yeah. <laughs> I remember in um, conflict resolution in high school, they say, in order to have a good friend, you have to be a good friend. Remember that? <laughs> so if you want people to read your blog, you might need to, you know, show them how to. You have an idea? I can't come up with anything. This is boring. This is boring? Yeah. So I mean, we're talking about. Huh? The Tiger's game? Yeah. yeah. They are? Yeah, they're at 700, 700 Oh, see? I mean, you know, and then you have to think. Your community. I mean, I'm up against the Tigers game. I'm boring too right now. <laughs> Goodness gracious. I have to think my days better. <laughs> so, if, so yeah, is any... Mm-hmm. When you say contribute to community, 
So, do you define the community? Do you define the community? Question: Do you define the community? Okay. Going back, you know, this is part of how you say it's, it's community. So you just said it's where you work and live, right? Mm -hmm. And you said it was Detroit Art Lovers. Oh. And you were thinking about that. Yeah. Who did you guys say your community was? Um, just our readers. The readers? Okay. So <clears throat> what is your message? What is your message you're trying to get out about your organization. Um, no, of your organization. Of organization in general? Uh -huh. um, do you guys have a mission statement or I mean I'm not saying you should know it I think we do, but it has something What's your mission? That's my mission. Um, our position's mission is to raise awareness and raise, raise funds for local businesses and community organizations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, what's the mission for Heritage? Inform readers, engage community. Um, so maybe like you and Joel have some overlap, maybe or no? You're not sure. You don't know. Well, that. sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So well, sharing the message, yeah. Sharing, sharing the message. The voice. Mm -hmm. Sharing the voice. Also, um, like I was involved. I'm involved every year with the Blog Action Day. They have once a year. Um, is, has anyone heard of Blog Action Day? Okay, so it's where um, people in all over the world pick, well, we don't pick, there's a topic that's picked, and it's usually something that's considered a human rights issue, um, or a crisis that affects people across all nations. And so the first year I did it was in 2010, it's been going on for about six years, and the subject was water. Because, you know, like half the world has, doesn't have enough water, and half the world uses water like it's nothing, <laughs> right? So it's this big imbalance, and um, so I learned so much during, you know, that whole process, right? Because my community completely expanded. So before I used to think about like HIV and you know AIDS and um, education and water. It's totally different things, right? It's totally different things. Well, during this process, because you listen to all these different bloggers, and you know some of the bloggers are not really just bloggers; they're also like doctors or and such. They showed a process of how women, especially like in some of the you know West African tribes, they have to travel five to seven miles in the morning in the dark to get water for their family. So the, after, you know, the man will go to work, the child, you know, will go to school and then she will go get water for the family. So if she goes, you know, walks all this way, she becomes prey in the dark for rapists, which is a big deal right now. So this helps spread the disease and, um, that's a long way to travel with water and then no telling what happens to you so sometimes the water is you know almost undrinkable a lot of times she comes back if the child is big enough to go with her right or help 
then they're not getting educated. So that's this poverty is going down a generation, right? It's like it gets worse by the minute, you know? It's like, dang, all that by, you know, taking a five-minute shower, you know? Like, I say, you know, it, it makes you, you know, think about it in a different light. So the first year, um, there were about 60 countries that were involved in this blog action day. This year, um, as of 9 o'clock, Monday morning, which was Black Action Day, there were 111, 111 countries involved, 43 languages represented, and almost 2,500 bloggers. So you, my community for that day, or maybe it's a little afterglow right now, is, <laughs> is bigger. And this year's theme was called The Power of We. So about finding any topic, any problem that is pervasive um, amongst the community and you know you showing where different people use a little bit of their resources for for-profit businesses not nonprofits but for-profit businesses all donate a little bit of their effort or, or their um, their resources so maybe the um, the gravel pit company you know donated so much gravel or you, you know maybe um, people that had a, you know an extra few people that could volunteer, you know, for one day out of the week. So everybody puts in all these resources to collectively work on an issue. And what it's supposed to do is highlight a problem and a solution involving more people, you know, all these different people. So it's no like huge dent in anyone's revenue. And so you see all these solutions. So I'm just reading through the other blogs, I'm like, wow, this was, you know, so so good or so enlightening. And I can even see like some of these solutions could be implemented around here. So like last year was food. Um, you know, there there are ways that um, people dealt with the issue of hunger in Haiti that can be translated in Southeast Asia, right? So you just share these resources. So going back to your community, you want to start small at first, but you also want to, in the back of your mind, thinking about how this can grow, how your community can grow. What are the heights? What is the ceiling? And preferably, um, you know, you won't have a ceiling. So some people say, you know, I don't want, you know, I'm, I'm trying to, in fact, somebody this morning um, at the mixer was saying, I'm a little bit uncomfortable stepping out of my comfort zone. Well, you know, the answer to that is increase your comfort zone. <laughs> Make your comfort zone bigger. And um, that may seem simple. <laughs> right. It sounds it sounds like oh she's being too simplistic or whatever else, but some of my best feedback on uh, my blog, especially the true story, which I talk about health and stuff, people around here, they don't need to necessarily read a blog about me because they know me, right? They see me all the time. <laughs> they hear me talking. They, I would love for them to, but they don't always. I have, you know, readers in like 23 countries, and I've had several people from, you know, Pakistan and Turkey and, you know, talk about some of the, you know, they may not comment publicly, but they'll email me and, you know, say, um, you know, I really enjoyed that blog or you're an inspiration or whatever. Um, I remember one time I was, you know, I've had a rough couple years, so I had, you know, put one that was a little personal and I was saying I was gonna take a break for a while. And I had two people that I've never met before, you know, um, and said, no, you cannot stop speaking because we're listening, you know? <laughs> you know, you just never know, you know, right? I love analytics. It's good for what it does, but it doesn't qualify the same way. You get me? So this is all going into your blog, thinking about your short-term, 
you know, who, who's your audience and, and who's your community. But I just encourage you um, to expand that view. When you expand your view and your comfort zone, you actually will bring on more people locally. Does that make sense? So, you know, I remember at a, when I was working at a place, uh, there was a lunch, you know how the lunchroom conversations can get a little wild. And um, they were talking about who was from where. And a young lady there said, oh, I was originally, you know, from whatever place, and then I moved to Michigan with my family. I don't know many people that, you know, are really originally from Ann Arbor, and even those, like, they moved away and maybe came back. And the other lady, you know, she said, yeah, nobody does that. You have to be a blank, blank, blank moron to <laughs> stay here your whole life. Okay. Disclaimer, I lived here my whole life. <laughs> so maybe I'm the moron, but I don't think so. I think I chose to be around my family and all that kind of thing. But um, the point is, sometimes by living here my whole life, sometimes the, uh, things that I've done or accomplishments have been diminished or looked over because I've always been here. Well, you know as opposed to I have people that I grew up with that went away at the same education but they moved away they and they came the prophets never respected in their hometown. Yes. Never respected in their hometown. Yeah, that's true. And so they come back, right? And all of a sudden they're gurus now. <laughs> you know? Um, one radio personality, my mom went to school with her. You know, they had the same exact education but she left for seven years, and she came back, and now she's miss you know, miss all that. Um, that's the idea, too. You know, it's, it's hard to make sometimes the parallels, but that's the idea. You have to have that mindset that originally people may be used to the newsletter. They may be used to just going on Facebook or, or just calling up or just, you know, finding out whatever from their donor packet that comes out. They may be used to that. They may not want to get on Twitter and Facebook or read your blog. They may not want to do that. And if they're not, if they're not receptive, you still keep them in mind, but think when you read your blog, especially, think about the larger community. After the larger community receives you, you'll start to see your local people come uh, fall into play. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> wrapping up anyways. Um, is it a test screen? Hmm? Um, oh, no. <laughs> it's so slick. I thought maybe I could just touch it. Oops. See you, John. So, um, la lastly, I put here, see you online. And this is just, like, these are the handles that I use in different spots. I put this on here, you know, so you, clearly so you can see where I am or, you know, come and, and find me. But outside of that, you should have something like that everywhere you are. So if you, if your organization is on five different social media networking sites, put each of those sites everywhere you are. So on your LinkedIn, put your Pinterest, your Facebook, your Twitter, your blog. On your blog, put your, you know, end your blog message with your Twitter, your, you know, how they can uh, enroll in your email list, all that. Do you use email list? Anybody use email marketing? They do? Okay. See if you can have, um, a blog feeder onto the newsletter that goes out. It's pretty, it's just a widget. It's very easy to put in. And so every time a newsletter goes out, it'll just be, it'll headline your blog. And, um, you know,
know, it'll say like in this issue, you've seen that in this issue, depending on whether you use MailChimp or constant contact, whatever it sounds like, um, you don't have to worry about that directly. But, you know, just put that request in that, okay, um, I'm doing this blog for DIA. <laughs> you know, we want to put that in. Same thing with the blog row. At the bottom, you might want to say um, on, on the newsletter, and, you know, I don't know what kind of influence you have on whoever does a newsletter. But you can also put, you know, ask them to put links to other artists or you know, supporters that are blogging about DIA. And that gives people yet another reason to open the newsletter. And um, although I don't spend a lot of time on it, um, mobile apps are still the number one um, outside of, you know, talking face to face. Text is the number one way to communicate, or people like to be communicated to. Um, in fact, the five businesses that um, were labeled as uh, for 2012 that are the best businesses to get into, like startups, are is mobile apps I mean, number one. So, if you have um, a way to just text people. Text people will say new blog entry. On my email or my email, my text signature, I actually have um, tweet at let's go for it. Like I have my Twitter on there. But sometimes I change it. Sometimes I put my blog on there. Whatever I want people to reference. Any questions? I expected more questions. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so I'll really quickly explain. So, Facebook, you already done Twitter, you care to. I really encourage, you know, everyone who does anything civic to at least check out care to.org. Um, there's a blog component there as well, and you can set it up, template, templatize it, all that. Um, but you're able to connect. It has less users, but the activity is huge. <laughs> once they once they once they find out you like what they like, it's you can't shut them up, right? And um, also, what's good about it is you can connect to this bigger community too, because there's something called butterfly rewards that you earn credits for critiquing articles or blogs about your particular subject. So this also helps you because you will start to be considered an expert in whatever you're critiquing. Not if you say something stupid. If, if you only, you know, your critique is that was good, that wasn't good, I don't like, I like. You may not be considered a guru, but if you have, you know, a, a really good sentence here and there about why you like something, then people will start to want to know, oh, you know, what is she talking about? Also, if you have a business aspect more of your community organization, so which sounds like um, most of us here do, Biz Sugar is also a good way to. That's another social networking site where you vote up an article or down an article. <clears throat> and that's a good way to connect with community there. Uh, Gmail, that's just my email, but also, you know, Gmail, can, you can G chat, you can make Google Hangouts, Google Plus, and I hate to be such an ambassador, ambassador for Google, but they have nonprofit hours, they have the customer service that you can access, like you wouldn't believe. If I had my way, I would use Bing, but Bing is not as local and as accessible. Gmail just does it for me. And you can also have a Google Plus page now for businesses. It was in beta, beta stage, but it's up and running for everybody now. And with the Google Plus for businesses, what it allows you to do is um, do not only cons you know people connections, but also business connections. 
and you don't have to worry about you know you messing up your own personal connections with people stumble upon is a curation site so the same way like a curate dot us would work um, or like Pinterest would work um, if you're doing art Pinterest is probably the best one but also if you have articles if you have media it sounded like you said something about media coverage um, stumble upon is a great way to allow n for new discovery uh, because if you don't you can post your own articles you can look for certain topics or you know collect them in different categories but you can also just click on stumble upon like you know they what they do is they have an intelligent software inside of it where they learn what your likes are so by me saying oh I don't want to read that I do want to read that I don't want to read that eventually they start when I hit stumble upon they pick articles for me that I would be interested in they do a pretty good job of it too and of course Pinterest which you all are familiar with and um, with Pinterest um, that's more for you know things that have a visual component Oops. but there also is a um, what they call it Pinterest for nerds <laughs> which is learnest which is a good place to do this it look, works just like Pinterest but it's learners but you have to go through a because um, it's in beta stage you have to go through an invitation procedure that's all I have okay. well thank you Leslie thank you I have one more of my questions <laughs> no questions no 